it's Zara and today I'm working on random acts of Christmas kindness a la Tracy Moreau and thank you to her she puts out a pattern and everything you need to create little creative gifts that you can give to strangers and that's her intention for us to give them away just at random to brighten someone's day and so over the past couple years I've been doing these and sharing them with you guys um, just giving little tutorials on how I paint them but she's already prepared um, you can I'll put the link for her Facebook in the description box for you to go over and in files you can actually um, print out your own copy of the different random acts of kindness that she's done in the past um, this little snowman, I did. I think I did a couple of these last year. There was a little gingerbread pin. These are pins. This year's is a pin. Um, I did. I did him as a pin and an ornament. The little Santas. This is a little. Uh, what is he? A polar bear, snowflake, and again, use what you have, guys. This is what I. Oh, the little thingy came off. But I do like to go get the the substrate if I can if I can find it I like to use the little because they're so cute but that being said I definitely used what I had when it came to these guys um, I have and I still have more of these snowflakes um, and I bought these like on clearance at one point and thought it would look cute and I try it so try it and just create be creative and create okay so this year's little snowman pin is the sky and it's all about popsicle sticks this year um, for whatever reason I mean I saw this and I, I don't know if I was even intending to do it I saw it I scrolled through and was like oh isn't that cute whatever went by but then when I did my trees so I've I did the last video I did I did my little I called them palette Christmas trees because I was um, mimicking the palette trees that you can make that are like really big three foot trees into an ornament um, I just added trims to these a little bit of trim to just bling them out a little bit but they're done um, with popsicle sticks not true popsicle sticks these are more of a tongue I'm just trying to hang it over here more of a tongue depressor size but look I added a little um, ribbon to this this like looks like a, a cupcake or a, some type of a cake so cute um anywho it's all about popsicle sticks this year because Tracy's little snowmen are done using popsicle sticks so let's go into the packet here and see what she wants you to have so for the snowman you're only going to need white she has warm white which I'm using light ivory um, lamp black burnt orange country red snow text right now I didn't actually I forgot to put this on my list when I went to the store because I wanted to see what it was because I have this snow text and it's just in the tub and that's what I use and it worked just fine so again use what you have but I wanted to see what this product was snow text right and I just forgot about it so I never looked um, craft twinkle clear ice this is um, a varnish and I have spoken about this in the past this is by folk art plaid folk art sparkle varnish and I've had this for years and I'm down to the last little bit of it but it has really nice chunky glitter inside so it was my fave and it's like colorful this is a little more of a fine glitter but you still get the same idea and this I believe is available this I bought I think like last year two years at the most so um, starlight starlight varnish it's by Americana hers is called she calls it craft twinkle clear ice um, anywho it's a really and I've always this is what I used on my ornaments whenever I did an ornament I would varnish it with the sparkle varnish because it just you know Christmas you can go crazy with the glitter <laughs> so much neater though like like that's why I really love stickles as well stickles is not a varnish but it's um, an accent that you can use but it's glitter in a in a glue so that it's not as messy as just straight glitter would be um, but Christmas you can get crazy with all that blingy shiny stuff so I have fun with it um, alright so 
the colors, there's four or five colors. She's got her the brushes that she uses as well. Um, just a couple different brushes. You don't need anything special. And then two and a half inch, and she put Michael's Crafts. So this stuff would be available at Michael's, um, supposedly. Two and a half inch popsicle sticks. So I got those. That's I had to I wanted to go get those because you can't really cut a popsicle stick. I mean you could. There's nothing that says you couldn't. But I wanted that little loopy appearance. I just thought it looked super cute. And they're like a dollar ninety nine, it's not a big deal. Um, where is it? Two and a half inch popsicle sticks, wood glue, dimensional holly stickers, ribbon or small bells or whatever you like, just for this little um embellishment on the hat. And I found mine at Hobby Lobby. I had a few, but Hobby Lobby has the dress it up buttons. So they have the Holly Jolly Christmas now. And so I picked up a couple packs of that. But there's also, like I just went through my stash and pulled anything. I mean, there's little, I have snowflake embellishments. Whatever. It's just a little look. I mean, I have these little ornament buttons. I have buttons, a ton of buttons because I embed them in clay. But these are Christmas ornaments. That would look cute on his hat. Anything, right? Something shiny. You could just put a little bling, a pearl. It doesn't matter. Um, a glue gun and glue and pin backs. So I've had these forever too since I've been doing jewelry. I have the, this is kind of like a more of a stick pin style. And then the little pin backs, which I have to put my pin backs on still. All right, so that's it. Don't need a lot of supplies. She didn't mention the cardstock because the first thing you're going to need to do, and she says, brush wood glue onto two inch wide strips of heavy cardstock. I'm just using regular old craft, craft cardstock that you get at Michael's. Um, I don't know what weight it is, but it's your standard weight and it works just fine. I'm going to do, I'll go off camera and I'll do it all, but I'm going to show you the process. I'm going to use my, I get a grubby old brush. This is really like stuck together because I use it for glue and stuff like that. My weld bond, just because I, I like it, it's a white glue, it's very strong. But I'm going to be, I'm going to spread it on here. Shake it down a little. Get that coating off the tip, it might come out a little better. I've been using this a lot, so I know I have some. Elmer's would be fine. You don't need, these are popsicle sticks. They're not um, heavy material. They're porous, so the glue is just going to suck right in. If you have any of the Aileen's tacky glues, those things will work just fine. I just am using what I have. And I have the Weld Bond because I do mosaics. And um, it was recommended to me. And I have a big old tube of it. So that's what I'm using. But use what you have. Aileen's, any of those um, craft glues are going to be fine. I'm sure even Elmer's would work. And I'm not being, I'm being pretty generous because I want this to hold together. And you're going to take your little popsicle sticks and put them in groups of four. Snug, snuggy up to each other. I'm going to try and keep them straight, like maybe if I work on a straight. I can usually eyeball things pretty well. And leave about like a, a half inch and start another one. So I'll have maybe four little snowmen on here when I'm done. And this is so cool because the paper will hold them together. When I looked at them, I thought, well, maybe it was just the cross one, the one that went across to make the hat, was what was holding them together. But you don't even see this paper. Now, that looks a little, it's not snug. Part of the paper came off but it'll hold. It must be this one that's not um, perfectly like parallel or whatever. You have a little bit of fudge time too, and I call it fudge time. I don't know why I call it fudge time, but 
means just play time to be able to um, even things up. But you got to move kind of fast because the glue will get less tacky. Oh, look, I can probably fit five on here. I could have moved them way closer together, too. Like, all you need is enough room to get a scissor in, the, in between to cut them apart. Yep, I can fit five on here. So then what I like to do is I finish them up, and I'm going to look, and I haven't, because one of my little things actually... When I put it in, I, I don't have it with me. In the bag, it says, um, this random act of kindness, you know, blah, 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 hope you have a, you know, is meant to brighten your day. There's a little, like, not a prayer, like a little thought that goes in there with it. Just a little printed out piece of paper that you can put in with your pen and just hand it to someone to brighten their day. So that's it. I'm going to set that aside and let it dry. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to paint just a little bit. It's not, it's not a big deal, all right? So I'll be back. Okay, so once that's dry, you're going to cut them apart. And honestly, if I'm, you know, just me being me, um, she said a two and a half inch piece of wood. You could do a two inch because that way I think leaving that extra half inch. Anyway, I'll show you what I mean. I'm going to end up cutting away a lot of the paper. I'll show you. So I just cut right almost on an angle so that I get right up against the popsicle stick. Oopsie. Cut through the glue. <clears throat> but then see how there's, let me zoom in a little. Sorry. There's paper there. Paper is showing, which personally I don't love. So I am going to just stick my scissors behind and cut that away and there is nothing wrong with the paper look I'm being a little picky and I'm just going to snip it away and you know do my best to cut away the remnants of paper so that you really don't see paper you only see popsicle sticks it's an illusion so I would suggest if you watch this fully before you create them, and I'll do it next time, which I really realized the first time I did it too, and I forgot. But you could just cut it down to two inches. Let's see what she put. Two inch. Oh, hello. So let's see how much this is. Yeah, so it's my mistake. I cut the I didn't read because she had it two inch. Hello. If you follow the directions the way, you know, Tracy wrote them, you'll be fine. All right, good. Sorry, my bad. So, you're going to cut them apart just like that. And then all of your popsicle sticks will be connected with a little piece of paper. Just like that. And if it was two inches, it would look perfectly neat. All right, let me go back up. Sorry, I know I was out of the shot. All right. So, and then you're just going to take an extra piece of the popsicle stick and glue it on to make the brim of the hat. So I just put a little in the middle. And she, how she worded it was, she puts, she says, I like a jaunty angle. This forms the brim of the hat. So she just, instead of putting it straight on, she just kind of puts it at an angle, which I also enjoy. I think that looks cute. And then I just wipe away the extra glue because I don't know, look guys, I'm picky. I have, I have my ways. All right, and just let it dry, and then you're ready to paint. All your little snowmen will be ready. I have already glued the first set, so I am going to go ahead and do this on camera, and I'm going to get out some black and some, she had warm white as her color, and I'm using light ivory. So use what you have. Got a, I'm just going to use my palette since it's on my desk. And a flat brush and this is not my nicest you know what I'll get a little bit of a better one so this is a, a number eight simply Simmons I, I think I got these for watercoloring but I haven't watercolored I need a good teacher anywho um warm white which is light ivory and straight black I think I'll put a little bit more because I'm gonna do a bunch and I would say you're probably definitely going to need two coats of white. I mean, not definitely, depending, but 
you know me, I, I'd rather do two sheer coats or thinner coats than one gloppy thick coat. So I always have water in my brush, but then I blot. So I, I let the water get sucked out of the bristles, but you just have a little moisture so that it's a, a nice slick. And I'm going to do, I could have done the black first, but let's just do the white. I think the directions have you doing the black. I'm just going to take a piece of deli paper and just put it here so I don't get paint everywhere. Just to protect my surface. I haven't been using my craft mat because I'm just lazy. That's really the only reason. And I'm just... That's it. Simple as that. I am going to go around the edges a little. You don't have to. It could be quick and easy. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple more white. And by the time that, that I finish them, that will be dry and I'll come in and do the black. Because if I touch the white when it's still wet, it'll smear and make a mess. So it's better to be on a dry surface or to just let the first color dry a little bit. It just will be less aggravation in the future if, if you just be a little bit patient, which I am not. Not by nature anyway, but I'm still learning all the time. I have control over myself, believe it or not. At 54 years old, I am learning still so much about myself. Try and change little, tweak little things all the time. I mean, hey, <clears throat> if you're perfect, good for you. Excellent. <laughs> I, however, not so much not perfect um, all right so anywho you could do two coat you should do two coats so I'll go off camera you know what let me just rinse my brush and I'm gonna throw a coat of black on here I just wanted to show you one thing about that it's just for me this little lip right here which has white paint on it and it's not dry so I will, again, I rinsed my brush. I have a little bit of water on my bristles. And I'm going to cut. No worries when you do the top part, but just that little lip there. I don't know. Maybe it would be easier to do the black first. But I'm just going to run the edge of my brush. And then when I do my second, I think I am going to go do all the black first. Because you get a little bit of black on the white, but then I can touch it up. Because I'd rather have that little lip painted. So see, I ended up coming back and doing the lip with a little fine brush. But I think, let me go ahead and do... the black first and then because of course black is a more opaque color it's not gonna it's gonna cover the white might not cover as easily but I think it might be easier and there it is so that's all you need to do is get this solid and then we're gonna put a little face on it it's pretty much done so it's not very difficult you guys we're gonna float one little float and you don't even need it but let's see. All right, let me go here. See how fast I move? <sighs> but so I want to just get, I like to do the little lip. You don't have to. But I just think it would look more finished. And you could take a little flat, a little um, liner brush if you want. But I'm just using the, the edge of this flat brush. And I got a little bit on the um, white part. So I think you really only need one nice solid coat of black and then two coats of white. That would be my preference. But this black's gonna cover just fine. And then um, we're gonna put a little of that snow tech on there. But see, I got a little bit of black right there. It, I am being so picky. So, you know, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and do 
um, I could just do one and be done. All right, because I'll do these after. So let me come back and put my second coat of white. See, I, I get very anal about things. Like this assembly line thing, I take very seriously. <laughs> All right, let me put. Now there could be still a little black in my brush, so just try to rinse it out pretty good. Now I see some black, but yeah, you can definitely cover. Okay, it's going to be fine. Um, what I mean is the black that I got on the white part, it covers great with this. And I actually got white on the lip, so don't be perfect. I am certainly not perfect, but I don't know why I'm being so crazy over it. I have, I guess it's considered maybe like a work ethic, right? Like maybe it's just because... Um, the qual I want the quality of the, my work to show. I don't want to want it to look like I didn't care because I do. But that being said, who's going to know that, you know, so sometimes we beat ourselves up over such silly things. We're not beat ourselves up, but give ourselves a hard time when see, and I can kind of tickle the color in there. Maybe that won't get it on there. And I know I'm not zoomed in, guys. So in other words, I'm trying to get the, the color as close to the popsicle stick without getting it on the edge of the popsicle stick. And I'll show you how I did in a sec. Yeah, I wish I would have read the directions see that's what patients would help me with um, because that paper you know I don't like that I cut the paper too big and now the paper but see that doesn't bother me oops I don't know why but that doesn't bother me it's the back whatever but see all right there's a little bit of white right here but for the most part it looks pretty good and I can just I can just touch that up because then when we do the snow tech, you're going to really see how anal I can be. Um, all right. So let's just, I'll take the heat gun to this because I'll just finish it right on camera and I'll come back to the rest of these little puppies. Let me just take my hot gun, my hot, this is actually an embossing gun. When I used to paint years ago, I used to bring a blow dryer before I knew about embossing guns. I had an old, like a, I think I, actually I got it at a yard sale. It was like 25 cents or something. But I used to keep it in my art um, bag. When I went to seminars and stuff like that, you need to like speed the drying up. I would just hit it with the blow dryer. But this is actually, this will get super hot, so. Be careful. So, now we're going to need a little, does she have, let's see, uh, shade under the brim of the hat, down the left side, along the bottom with a float of thinned asphaltum, and I didn't have asphaltum, which I know I do, so I'm just going to use um, coffee bean, or use your favorite brown, I don't know, you don't have to have the specific name. Just a nice shady color. Am I still zoomed in? Yeah, well, that's okay. I'm going to float, but you guys don't worry. She has us floating along the bottom too, under the brim and down the left side and along the bottom. Huh, I only did it under the under the brim I think that looks fine I don't think I want to do it anywhere else so anywho again I am doing my own thing I'm looking for my angle brush I'm using my older more roughed up one and to do a float so this is a float I love to show you guys every time don't get upset it's 
it's a technique that takes practice. I'm putting a little bit of paint. I, I like an angle brush to float, but you know, you can do it with a flat. Water in the brush, that's important because the water is what the paint floats on. The water floats across, I'm sorry, the paint floats across the water. So corner load, I didn't shake it very well, and just mix the paint. So now I'm pushing the paint. A very See, there's water, a lot of water. I'm going to add a little more paint. It's very wet, but I like that because then I can mop the water edge. You can also just blot again. Take a little water out of the brush. That looks perfect. I'm just going to go right, stick the color right up under the brim. And I'm a, um, instead of doing a one straight stroke, I like to pity pat it through. But that's it. You're done. So if I was assembly lining this, I would float, 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 like float all of them. And then I would come back and do, you know, put the faces on all of them. And then I splashed this guy. I'll do another coat on him. Um, but that's it. It's just a little shade. You know what? Let me put a little bit um, on the bottom and see what it looks like. Since she specified. And she also had it going down the, um, the left side or right side. I forget. I mean, it looks cute. I like floating, that's why. All right, so we have to let that dry, but she wants us to put a little face on here. I'm just gonna use a rigger, which is my, my newest of my <laughs> liner brushes. You could use what you have, a number three round, whatever it takes to get a little eyeball on here. Um, right here. Oops. I see you. All right. And again, I always add water to my brush. So I have a, the bristles are just not bone dry. That's all I mean by that. Okay. So I will just take the black and I'm not getting a ton of paint. I want to control it because circles will grow on me. And I'm just going to use the popsicle sticks as my guide, but I'm going to stick the eyes on the two middle popsicle sticks and just try to make them the same size. She did a cool, let me show you the picture. See, the other thing about Tracy's patterns is she gives you a picture. So here's all the directions so far. Gluing, gluing the hats, then painting. See how she's doing an assembly line, and then putting their little faces on. So you see how she just kind of dip dotted them with a big, small, 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 and I should do that. And you know what else? I should follow her damn directions because she has a specific way. So she has put the eyes, the nose, and the mouth. Let it dry. Then dry brush the cheek with a little country red and shade under the brim. So she has a shading at the end. And then add the highlights with warm white. And then you put the snow tech on at the end and then add your varnish. So I am a rebel. I don't follow directions evidently. But I didn't, I didn't dip dot my, look, here's how I did my little mouth. <clears throat> and I, first I did dry brush the cheeks. So I'm sorry, I'm all over the place. If I'm going to do a tutorial, I should do it in a specific order. It just makes it easier. So to dry brush, I'm using a specific kind of brush. And it's, this is called a dry blending brush by... Cole, Debbie Cole and mine's dirty it has the red on it but I don't like to get it wet so I'm actually using true red and I'm just gonna put some out and here's how you dry brush you take your brush put it in the paint get it on the tips of the bristles you don't need to work it all the way down into the ferrule you just need to have it on the tip kind of work it on there then you get a dry paper towel and brush off the wetness. Okay, so now I have paint on here, but it's just light. And then you're going to kind of scrub a cheek on gently. And I am going to get it on his eyes. I want to go in a circle. 
It's looking really scratchy, but that's okay. That's kind of a dry brush cheek. And I would have loved to have more done because I would just go all the way down the line with this. But then I'm going to take my black and finish my little mouth. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to do a little nose. I'm using two colors of orange. I have burnt orange, which I think that's the only one she used, and like a little glossy um, pumpkin orange because it just brightened it up. And I like the way it looks, so I'm doing it. So I'm going to go with burnt orange, and I like to put it down on this side of the popsicle stick and kind of just wiggle it over and kind of go up to make it look like, you know how carrots, who's in there? Can you give her some water? Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Jenny drinks Kirby's water all the time. And just make it look kind of carroty. And then a little bit of the, um, what did I say it was called? I don't know, but it's a much brighter orange and I'm just gonna hit the tip, the top of it. To give it a little highlight then I'm going to go in with a little brush and go right up oops and she put a nice big one for the cheek right there and that's it that's your face so he's done I mean that looks cute I think the cheek could have been up higher and like more opposite the nose, but it's a cute little thing, right? Now, the snow tech is a little tricky, and that's probably why she uses this other product that I didn't say it's called Snow Tech's Right, W R I T E. But all I did was take this little tool that I have, and you can use a palette knife, you could probably use a popsicle stick, whatever, you know. I just happen to have this and I scoop this out, try to find some wet because it's a little dried out, and just get some. And I just used the um, the brim of the popsicle stick to kind of push it down against. Okay, hopefully I'm in the shot. Because mine is a little old, so I don't think it's as sticky as it might be, but you want it to look like snow, so just kind of push it. And snow, you know, lands where it lands. It doesn't have a, a rhyme or reason to it, so you can't go wrong. I'm going to get a little bit more and just put it over here. And this will dry hard. So, and then if I got it all over the place, I would, like, use my Q-tip because I'm, you know, like I said, I'm a li I try to be perfect, and I, I shouldn't because it's not. And that I'm going to let that dry. And then the last thing, <clears throat> well, ouch, stab yourself. Try not to stab yourself. I'm going to cover this because I really don't want it to dry out. I have these little um, embellishments. And I have two different kinds. I have ones that have bling, like a little bit of glitter. And then I have these, which is like three different sizes of this one. I use this middle size a lot. I've used the little one, the middle one, and the bling one. So it's just a little bit of a different color green, but it has sparkly berries. And then I ended up putting um, glossy accents on them because I thought they were just, see how dull? These are just dull. They don't have any sparkle to them, and I just love glitter. And then, <clears throat> <clears throat> I think I glued these on before I varnished, and then I just tucked when I when I used the varnish. I just went like this up against it, and you could go all over it. It's fine. <clears throat> but I felt like it would stick better to the paint than it would to the varnish, because varnish has like a little bit of a slickness to it. So, and then I just varnished everywhere with the um, sparkle varnish or this one, the starlight varnish. It's a glittering varnish. And then 
the last thing you're gonna do so yes yeah, so I would just take this um I'll probably just use my Fabri-Tac I'm not fat why do I say it weld bond and I'm gonna use this one and just put it right on the back of that glossy accents would hold a lot of different glues are good for um, this type of thing and I just stick it right down in there push it I push down up against the brim and I don't love that that um, glue is there but it will dry clear so I mean it's not an issue just my my own issue so I wipe it but look how cute and then the final thing is going to be to add a little pin back so I haven't done that on any and you can sign your name I would put, I'm going to put my name I'm not putting the date though I've decided to just put my name so that you know maybe someone regifts it and it doesn't seem like it's something oh, I can't even write my own name and I'm going to cover that with the this and then I have these pin backs. I like it when the pin thing is on the bottom. I'm going to use Weld Bond. Yeah, I'm covering my name. So I am far from perfect, you guys. Ta da! And that is this year's random act of kindness. Isn't it so cute? <sighs> I hope that helps. I'm just going to continue painting and having fun and creating these little guys and just, you know, do my thing. All right? So, thanks for watching.